conversation circle on anti-human trafficking. We're so happy that you're here joining us from all over the world. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is for you. We're glad you're here. This space, as, we, as you know, was designed to, for persons to come together to raise ideas and um, exchange ideas actually on specific topics. And today's topic is, um, excuse me, anti-human trafficking. And it's a broad topic. So we break out into several um, breakout sessions or breakout rooms with my follow my, my fellow co-hosts. Um, at this point, I want to pass over to my, to my right, my follow, my left, I'm sorry, my fellow co-host, Racha Hapa, who will welcome you as well. And um, take it over, Racha. Thank and you. welcome. Thank you so much, Terry. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are super excited to have this event here today. Just this space for us to all come and share our passion. I know that everyone in the anti-trafficking movement has so much passion for the cause, and it's really nice to have this space to come together and be able to talk and, and, and just share thoughts and ideas and even feelings. Um, so my name is Resha Hafar, and I am an anti-human trafficking activist from Tunisia. Um, I am also the founder of a Youth Against Slavery Movement, as you can see behind me. <laughs> and um, I am also the co-founder of the Anti-Slavery Collective for Generation Equality. Um, and that's uh, something I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about today, because we were thinking about how are we going to get out of this session, ensuring that we have a way forward uh, and some outcomes that we can actually put into action and, and ensure that this passion uh, is captured. So I am going to share with you my screen and just take you through what the generation equality is all about. Um, and how did we come to organize this anti-slavery collective campaign to push for the inclusion of the anti-human trafficking agenda um, and, and connect it and intersect it with the other gender related issues. Um, it would be really great for all of you. I see that everyone is writing in the chat where they are from. It would be really great to continue doing that so we can know who's, who's, a, who's in the room um, as, as we move forward. So I am going to share my screen. I hope this does not fail me. So um, maybe it would be good to know, um, you can just say in the chat, uh, yes or no, how many of you are familiar with the Generation Equality Forum? Um, it's uh, currently the biggest movement um, stakeholder, a multi-stakeholder and intergenerational uh, movement led by UN Women and Mexico and France and other governments and stakeholders to ensure a, the end of gender injustice globally through setting up six thematic action coalitions um, that are going to work on different themes of gender-based violence, economic justice and rights, bodily autonomy and sexual and reproductive health and rights, feminist action for climate justice, technology and innovation for gender equality and feminist movement and leadership. And there's also a compact for uh, women, peace and security. Uh, this is a very bold and um, ambitious vision of everyone passionate about uh, fighting for an equal world coming together to work on this to ensure that by 2020, uh, 2030, we are going to transform the world together and ensure that gender uh, issues um, uh, come to uh, a level of, of where we want to see it because we are lagging behind when it comes to women uh, uh, and gender rights. So the Generation Equality Forum um, is a place where all feminists are coming and everyone is working uh, on those different issues. However, uh, as an anti-trafficking activist, I came to the space and I realized that uh, the anti-trafficking agenda was completely excluded from the conversations. And this is something that we all uh, know happens everywhere all the time. Anti-trafficking conversations are excluded from so many advocacy spaces on local, national and regional levels. Um, so what we did is that um, I co-founded with a, a other group of amazing women activists, a what we call the anti-slavery collective for generation equality 
And with this, we led a consultative process where we produced a set of recommendations for all the action coalitions with their different themes um, to ensure that everyone in the Generation Equality Forum, all the different stakeholders, regardless where they come from, regardless of what are the feminist issues and the gender related issues they work on, understand the connection between human trafficking and those issues. So we spent the last year mobilizing uh, you know, activists and organizations globally to ensure everyone in the generation equality space knows how to connect human trafficking uh, to their work. So we came up with this 44 comprehensive um, recommendations document where we break down the connections between human trafficking and the specific action coalition themes. And we have been sharing it widely with uh, everyone in the space, with all the leadership, with an even UN women and the leading uh, governments, Mexico, France, and also the action coalition leaders. However, we still see that our recommendations are not taken into consideration. We still see that there is a lack of integration of the anti-trafficking agenda, and that is still super alarming for us. And that's why we wanted to take this opportunity today to introduce you to our collective and to see if there is an, an, an interest from all of you coming together to ensure that we push together for the anti-trafficking agenda within the Generation Equality Forum. Um, one easy way to do that is to apply to become a commitment maker within one of the action coalitions under this, those six themes that I mentioned already to you, also uh, with the Compact on Women, Peace and Security. So there is plenty of room for all of us, regardless of what are the issues we're working on in, related, in relation to gender, there is so much space for us to come in and put our voices and our work together and say, we need to ensure that human trafficking is no more excluded. We need to ensure that those one in each 130 women and girls who are trafficked and are stuck in modern slavery every, every day can find someone to stand up for them and can find the voice and the space to ensure that they are gonna have a dignified free life. Um, so this is just, just the thoughts of what we are gonna be discussing as well. Um, um, my breakout room is going to be about youth leadership because I am a young activist and I realize there is a huge uh, disconnect between youth and the anti-trafficking uh, movement globally and I think it's high time we all look into what is the added value of youth leadership in the global uh, anti-trafficking movement. So welcome everyone, super excited for this session and I will hand over to Gloria to introduce herself and her breakout room session. Thank you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, there you go. Okay, thank you everyone and welcome. Greetings from Ghana. This is Gloria Kankam. I'm talking on transnational migration as part of um, ECOHED's way of getting people into human trafficking, both within and cross-border, um, at the cross-border level. And when we look at human rights, I am um, human trafficking. I'm happy uh, sister mentioned that um, we don't put it on the table for discussion, but this is the time for us to put it on the table for discussion. And I'm also excited about the Generation Equality Forum coming on next week. And I, I will require that all of us here register I think the deadline for registration is 26, just two days from today. So we all have to get on board and bring the issues at stake so that we can talk about it. And I will say that um, even within our own recommendation for the Universal Periodic Review, they asked to have anti-trafficking units, both in the police service and also in the Ministry of Gender, which has been set up. So I'm also excited to be here to talk about uh, issues affecting women most especially within um, the domain of COVID-19, women's leadership, elimination of violence against women. So all of you are welcome on board and I'm sure we'll have a great discussion in the breakout session. Thank you all for coming on board.
Thank you, Racha. Thank you, Gloria. So as you can see already, we have some, an exciting 90 minutes uh, ahead of us, or less than 90 now. Um, but this is really a place for your voices. So we are not, we hope that you will engage in the breakout sessions. There are three, Racha is using, is, as she mentioned, is, is um, facilitating the youth leadership breakout session. I will be facilitating the human trafficking breakout session and I'm focusing on this in this on the South South so Latin America and the Caribbean and the South South and Gloria is uh, focusing on multinational human trafficking so in my breakout session I'm going to focus on the three P's I'm going to throw those three P's out to you whoever comes into that breakout session and we'll have an engaging uh, 30 45 minutes of um, talking about the three P's what it means to you what what how we'd like to use those P's and how, what we need to do to be going forward with those P's. And if there's any other letters in the alphabet that you wanted to, to, to throw in, um, but the three P's as we know are prevention, protection, and, 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 um, and uh, um, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, prosecuting. <laughs> prosecuting, yes, I'm getting like a brain freeze there, but yeah, so the three P's, prevention, protection, and prosecution. So we wanna make sure that Again, this is an engaging, open environment for all of you to participate. Um, and I look forward to having that time with you in this separate breakout sessions. And then after the 45 minutes of the breakout, then we will come back into this room, do some sharing and talk about how we're gonna go forward. So with that, I will ask our lovely director, Devon, Devon to take us to the breakout sessions, please. See you there. Uh, each facilitator can just share some highlights from their sessions, and then we can move Raja, to- if you don't mind, I don't see Gloria yet. Is she back? No, I don't see her either. Let's wait for her to come back before we, we start. I see her. She's here. Oh, she's here. Okay, yep. great. Great. All right, Terry, would you like to go, or do you want to well, let- you, you you go, go ahead, please. You go ahead. You start. Okay. So we started the session, it was really fascinating and the time flew by and we didn't even realize where it went. Um, everyone who was there was super passionate and super honest and open and I really appreciate everyone's contributions. We, we actually started by discussing the, the crisis, the border crisis in the US. And then we took that to talk about how can meaningful youth leadership you know, uh, transform our reality when youth have the power to access decision-making processes and to make their voices heard alongside the voices of survivors. So we also discussed how important it is to amplify the voices of survivors of trafficking because they hold that piece of the experience, the lived experience. And we need to ensure that there is more space for that collaboration between everyone, you know, the, the traditional leaders, the youth leaders, the other leaders, the, um, the, the survivors and everyone. And we were talking about how it's important to also reach the younger generations to, uh, to raise awareness and ensure that they do not fall into the traps of trafficking by raising awareness and educating them in schools and even outside of schools. Um, we had a couple of amazing youth activists. We have Eshan, uh, who's the founder of uh, Stolen Dreams in, in the UK. He's only 17, but he's so inspiring and amazing. Um, we also heard from Tatiana, who's the president of the uh, United Nations Association, the Bronx chapter. Uh, and they both talked about how, how, like how the youth struggle until today, we are tokenized and we do not find the space to sit on the table with everyone else to actually talk about the issues that touch us the most. We all know that trafficking affects youth and, 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 and girls and boys, you know, in, 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 in a very disproportionate way. Um, so it's very important that we engage the youth voice in this and not only engage, but give youth the leadership so that they can take us for their vision and, and, and just, you know, show us what a transformed world would look like. Um, I'm just really inspired by everyone and I thank you all. And yeah, I can't wait to hear from Terry and Gloria about your sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rasha. Gloria, you want to share? Gloria, I think you might be muted. I don't see Gloria, so maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. 
So we looked at the issues and thank you everybody. Thank you, Terry and everyone. Um, and our breakout session was great. I mean, we brought our perspective to the issues and we looked at mainly the issues of gender in relation to transnationals and also how many um, traffic persons are lured into these issues. Mm -hmm. And the, the root cause of these is the issue of um, poverty. And we also looked at the issue of organized crime. You know, these traffickers are well organized and you find it very difficult to even detect. And when you are even detected, those who are trafficked themselves will not even believe what you are telling them unless they get there and they find themselves into these issues. And we are trying to look at the issue of legislation, workable legislation in all countries and how we can collaborate across borders as activists, as state agencies, non-state agents, um, non-state artists. And the issue of also our involvement in other spaces like the universal periodic review, for instance, of countries, we should make our voices heard. I'm happy um, if I talk about the issue of the youth not being part of the leadership. We need to bring our voices into perspective. We need to be heard our thoughts. And these are the issues that we are looking at. And we are also looking at the issue of um, people who are trafficked, persons who are trafficked, being mainly women. 71.4% of trafficked persons any day, any time are women. And we really have to look at it because it affects us in some way. Because at the end of the day, it comes to bother on the health of the woman, the economic rights of the woman, the well-being of the woman, and all the other areas that the SDG is telling us. Uh, the issue of SDG 5, I think that is a borderline for all of us, gender equality. And even SDG 4, because if the child does not have anything, doesn't have proper education, what else can they do? They want to look out for other men, and then they'll be lured as going as transnational, and then they get there and it's something else. And then the issue of countries having proper laws for migrant workers. Um, if there are no uh, laws, right there. Have an individual, please. Me. Okay. Your name is please. How are you? Can we ask? Okay, thank you so much. Can we ask participants mm -hmm. to mute themselves if they're not speaking, please? Thank you. So um, we'll have to look at all of these things. And thank you everyone for the perspective. I think we have persons from across board. We have um, from Germany, from Canada, from the US and everywhere. And we all agree that the conversation is ending. It's not ending with us today, but it has to be going on. We have to keep raising awareness, sensitizing. And then the three Ps come to play. Protect, prevention, protection, and prosecution. And we must ensure, sometimes we have to insist that people who are arrested for human trafficking are actually prosecuted. It doesn't matter where they come from. And if we do that, somebody mentioned if one, two, three, four, five are prosecuted, it will at least minimize. It might not eradicate it, eliminate it entirely, but then it will minimize the issue. So thank you so much for everybody's perspective and thoughts on this issue. I, I get back to Terry. Thank you. Terry, you're muted. Yes, I am. Sorry about that. Thank you both for um, your contributions. Obviously, you had some a lot of very spirited discussions, and so do, did we in our room. I would love to say that I can carry the whole entire load, but I'd love to share and have some of the voices when my room speak up because we or our breakout sessions because we had such good information shared from the very beginning we had great questions posed we had a call to action uh, many of the things that you already mentioned are around youth youth um involvement around legislation around um um insecurities of people young people or people in general poverty or other types of insecurities which may be May, may allow them themselves to be lured into trafficking, et cetera. So we, we talked about a lot of the things that you've already raised. And I would ask if you guys don't mind me calling on you, I would like to, some of you who um, did speak in our room to speak up now. So I'm gonna ask Nancy, I know you've had some 
um, a wonderful uh, intervention. Winifred, if you're still there, if you're still with us, I'd love you to have an intervention. Just to share what you what you um, shared in our room. Dr. Thomas, out of the gate, you had a great question that you posed to the group. I'd like you to share. Maria from the Netherlands, if you're on, I'd, still like, I'd like you to share. So let's start with uh, Nancy, then Winifred, then Dr. Thomas, and um, excuse me, and, and then and Maria, and then we'll keep going. Um, I asked for best practices, if anyone had best practices around um, children and teachers and parents as far as bringing this to them in a structured way and training. And we did get some feedback and there were some websites, which is really good. One thing I found very interesting was I had asked everyone to raise their hand if at age 25 or younger, they were a part of any kind of education or training on human trafficking. And I didn't see anyone's hand go up. So that just tells me that up to this point or up until not too long ago, very little was done about this. Yeah. And I think it's great that we're really honing in on it now yeah. and coming together to share best ideas and trying to make this go away, yeah. which is what's the bottom line of all of this. Absolutely. Thank you, Nancy, for that. Uh, Winifred, are you on? Uh, you yes. had a call to action. Can you give us that call to action again? Um, um, I, I began by posing a question uh, in terms of uh, why is it that uh, human trafficking uh, would not be uh, part of the uh, a, a main focus in the action coalitions? And um, linking that then with the discrepancy between uh, the numbers of peoples that are prosecuted uh, and uh, over and against the number of victims. And why is this? And then I continued uh, later uh, to uh, ask the question about power and um, uh, why, uh, like, um, uh, 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 we're all complicit uh, in a sense. And many of the actions that we're doing are a kind of band-aids yeah. while we are uh, complicit in what permits people to be bought and sold and commodified. Yeah. And so how can we address that issue? Because it surely is a, a violence and a denial of people's rights. So uh, that was, uh, I think, the call that I had. How can we get at the power dynamic? Thank you. Thank you, Winifred. And Dr. Thomas. OK, hello, everyone. I've rung up the issue as well as far as how can we get the police to realize the severity of human trafficking when um, a call is first initially made to reduce that time from when the person is first trafficked to you know when we start to um, look for them because we know that time is of the essence. Right. And then I answer Winifred's call to action um, as far as when she talked about what are some of the barriers um, I mentioned that governmental involvement is definitely a barrier across, you know, the, across internationally. Right. Thank you, Dr. Thomas and Maria. Then after Maria, I'd like um, Sarah from Columbus, Ohio, to, to share her intervention as well. So Maria, then Sarah. Maria, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, and I shared some of my experiences. Wait, I'll put my camera on as well. I shared some of my experiences uh, from the work in the Netherlands uh, at the grassroots level uh, with victims of human trafficking and our experiences in cooperating with, with police forces there in as well. And the issues that we run into, or even when we have a relatively working system and cooperation with police forces, when uh, even the, the capturing of um, perpetrators or traffickers will not last for much longer than uh, two to three years, or in the extremest cases, maybe 10 years, um, then people are, victims are often reluctant to actually even um, press charges against uh, traffickers. That was one of the issues that I raised, uh, or at least the most important one. 
Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And Sarah from Columbus, Ohio. And, and if um, my friend from Niagara Falls, Elizabeth, if you are still with us, if you can share your intervention as well following Sarah. Well, thank you very much. Um, um, the Canadian Federation of University Women Ontario Council has a resolution that will be finalized in, will go through the final vote to become an advocacy tool in May. And um, it's about curriculum inclusion in the grade nine and 10 health curriculum on luring and coercive control techniques so that students can be aware and make informed choices. And um, secondly, uh, like a 10 minute digital training for teachers um, on recognizing and being like, not just the first responders, but but like the first first responders. I think as women, um, you know, you use the term boogeyman. I think uh, male um, legislators, no matter how sympathetic they are, they're, they've got a boogeyman approach, while women have a more um, uh, preemptive um, um, avoiding crisis. So this, um, anyways, I will, I'll send that to, um, I've already sent it. I'm just sending it to Rochelle and uh, Terry right now. It's in the process, so it's not a website yet. But uh, yeah, so that's what we're excited about. Great, thank you. And Elizabeth from Niagara Falls, and I will ask Patrice from London, who had a, a really in, a different twist, and I, I, I thought I would ask her to share uh, following uh, Elizabeth. And then, of course, my friend from New Jersey, um, who was one of the first uh, providers of, of a solution, actually, uh, Sarah, not Sarah, I'm sorry, Claudia, Claudia. So um, Elizabeth, followed by Patrice, followed by Claudia, please. If you guys are still with us. Hello. Yes. Elizabeth from Niagara Falls, are you still with us? Um, yes, I just, I just uh, talked. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yes, all right. thank you, Elizabeth. Now Patrice is followed by and, and following in uh, following Patrice. Yeah, so Patrice now, please. Sorry. Good morning, good afternoon. This is Patrice from London. Yes, um, I, I raise the issue that in London, in England, we don't have an anti anti anti-trafficking commission, we have an anti-slavery one who does much the same work. So the question of semantics is student of slavery here. And Anti-trafficking victims make their application to the Home Office here, um, and it's done through the National Referral Mechanism. And there are a lot of children, about 2,000 children last year applied as trafficked children. Um, and then the process is very many people who are trafficked, whether it's prostitution or um, on the basis of domestic servitude or forced labor, claim asylum. And I, I was involved in this sort of work. And they claim it obviously on the basis of asylum, human rights, going to the courts, the tribunal, and very often can get some form of leave if they're successful. But it's dealt with first at the Home Office. And if they're unsuccessful in the Home Office, they can appeal to a tribunal. Yeah. So as I say, um, well, the other point I made was that we need to look at traffic people coming out of conflicts all around the world because they're seen as vulnerable. The traffickers prey on them. Yemen, Africa, and so on. And also, I'm told that um, one NGO has what are called survivor's kits for anti traffic people for a month, just how we can help. So uh, that's my contribution from the London end. Thank you, Trudy. Thank you, thank you, Patrice. And, and uh, Claudia, you started us off with a, a, a great su suggestion or solution to the first question that was posed. Are you still with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I. we, are, we can. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Covenant House, uh, which is uh, an international organization to help uh, homeless youth, but Covenant House New Jersey did a research study with, I think, Sinai Hospital and Harvard. They came up with four questions uh, that are reliable for uh, first responders to ask uh, victims of, of trafficking or people who are arrested or show up in the emergency room. Uh, these four questions really can really uh, re pretty reliably identify those who are being either labor or sex trafficked. 
Um, and I don't have those four questions with me. I don't know whether I can, could just give them out, but uh, if you contact Covenant House, New Jersey, that they probably uh, would be able to help you. Jim White is the executive director there. And perhaps uh, I know he was very involved in this study that came up with these four questions uh, for first responders. Great. Thank you, Claudia. And there were many more interventions, too many to call uh, individually, but I'll just mention quickly, Emma, Juliet, um, Helen, um, there were, uh, like I said, a lot of interventions. I will just wrap this segment up by saying that, again, many of the things that were raised in the other rooms were raised in our breakout session. And one thing that came out of it um, was that the fact that maybe it's now a good time to have a universal law, universal law that will that will that can be used regardless of where the trafficker is 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 trafficking or or where he's being he or she's being prosecuted. That law applies so that one one country doesn't have a slap on the wrist type of law versus another country having uh, you're in prison for the rest of your life law. So we need to maybe be advocating for a universal law that applies to traffickers. And that, um, with that, I will turn it back over to my co-host Rasha to wrap us up. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really inspired by everyone's contributions and calls to action. And I'm really looking forward to receiving all the, the great work and the stuff that you mentioned. Um, Terry, just to, to maybe respond on the, on the final note. So the Palermo Protocol is supposed to be the international document and the, like the guiding principle and the law for everyone. The problem is that those countries are not willing to put the effort to prioritize the issues of trafficking because either these governments are corporate, you know, they're, they're part, it's, it's corruption that also keeps them part of the crime. And also because they, well, for example, in Tunisia, when, when the law passed, the Tunisian national law passed in 2016, it's too, la it's too late. And Tunisia ratified the Palermo Protocol back in 2003. So there was this gap of almost more than 10 years where they were not sure how to work on it. And when we asked them, they said, well, because we were a dictatorship, if we would say, yes, we do have trafficking, that means our leadership has to admit that they are failing and that's not something they want to do. So they would just cover it and pretend that the problem doesn't exist and not work on it. And that's the problem. And that's why we need youth involvement and youth engagement and youth leadership in this so that youth can also hold their governments accountable because this is our future. It's, it's today and it's tomorrow. Um, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm just really inspired and I'm, I'm super grateful that everyone is here today. Um, usually in, in, in so many spaces where I go, I find myself you know, a lot, uh, the only one talking about human trafficking in the room and it's such a big burden. Um, but yeah, so I want, I want you all to know that there's so much you can do. There's so much you can support with. Um, when we talk about the, I mean, there's a solution to all of this, which is working collectively together and ensuring that anti-trafficking agenda is everywhere in all the advocacy spaces, especially related to gender issues. So again, um, I am super happy to um, share with all of you. Um, here is my email. I'm happy to share with you and include you in our collective listserv for the Anti-Slavery Collective for Generation Equality. All of you as organizations or as institutions you can apply to become a commitment maker. You can commit to supporting the action coalitions of the generation equality by committing to advocacy or support in policy or whatever your capacity is. You can put that commitment, however, by ensuring that the anti-trafficking and anti-slavery agenda is in these action coalitions. Um, so we did a lot, we did most of the homework for you. We have done the mobilization. We have done the consultative process where we consulted more than 150 organizations globally, including the CEDO. And we produced the 44 page document recommendation on how to connect and how to advocate for 
human trafficking within the anti the anti traffic within the generation equality process. So the the applications for commitment making will be opened next week after the Mexico forum. And I also want to invite invite you all to attend the Mexico forum, which is the kick off of the generation equality forum. So the applications for commitment making will open on the 31st until the July forum uh, of Paris. So you will have three months to talk to your organizations, to talk to your institutions, to understand how you can come in as a commitment maker, as a member of these six action coalitions that work on gender, as I said, working on GBV, economic justice and rights, sexual reproductive health, tech, climate, feminist movement, and also peace and security. So there is room for everyone here to engage. And we are super happy to work with you to tell you about the blueprint of the action coalitions, what are the, the, the actions they are coming up with. So for example, on the Economic Justice and Rights Action Coalition, they have a whole action area under fair labor, you know, forced labor and fair labor. That's all about human trafficking. So all of us can come together, become commitment makers on these action coalitions and really advocate nonstop and persevere, just like Ishan said, we need to persevere so that these issues are recognized because there's a huge divide on the global level when we talk about human trafficking. There's those who are abolitionists and there's those who are um, pro-sex work and in these spaces of feminist conversations and gender related issues, people tend to exclude human trafficking all together so that they won't have to engage in these conversations. And that is harmful because we cannot keep excluding these issues. So I'm going to reshare with you the links um, for the action coalitions. You can see how you can uh, engage as a commitment maker. Um, you can find all the information in the website. And I'm really happy to connect with all of you on like an individual level to explain to you more, to add you to our list serve. Um, so I put my email, I, I put the Action Coalition's link. This is the link to our, um, to the application for the commitment making here. Um, I'm also going to share with you the link to our uh, recommendations document, which is a beautiful written document that reflects the voices of so many different organizations globally. So we were not only looking at the global level, but we're also looking at the grassroots from all the continents. We have people from everywhere talking about the four P's, prevention, protection, prosecution, and partnerships and how we can also put youth in the heart of this. And there's also a section on education and early adolescent girls education. So there is room for everyone. I want you all to engage. I want you all, I wanna see all your names, all your organizations and the action coalitions. Um, and together we can do this. And then on the second point, um, and on the second point, so the second thing you can do to support us um, as you have, as you can see behind me. So I founded Youth Against Slavery Movement after eight years of struggling as a young activist, uh, like working on human trafficking. I started as, as a local activist in Tunisia. I founded Not For Trade organization as the first local organization in Tunisia that works solely on human trafficking. And I faced so much pushback, so much exclusion, so much disrespect. I remember how governmental officials would laugh at my face because they didn't like that I was young and I was talking about these issues. There was so much, so much tokenism. And that's why I founded Youth Against Slavery Movement because we cannot come to a solution if half of the world population, which is most affected is not in the conversation. So I will share the link with you. We are launching officially on July 30th and we are going to be working under the two P's of prevention and partnerships. We're starting with Africa. This is a global youth-led, youth-centered movement. We're starting by Africa. We're going to work on creating local coalitions, educating people, building their capacities, training them, giving them toolkits, and giving them the power to stand strong and collectively um, together against the injustices of their governments and the oppression uh, so that they can find that space to work together, to feel that they're not in silos, they're not alone, and we can all do this together. So 
you can all support us as well. I will share with you the link, our landing page. We still do not have a website, it's coming soon, but we have really exciting uh, opportunities and we are working on this from a root causes. We're not talking about human trafficking as the, as, as the ultimate um, issue we're working on. We're working on root causes. How can I break down child marriage? How can I say child marriage is trafficking if people do not understand that? I need to talk to them about gender. I need to talk to them about cultural norms. I need to talk to them about the practices they take for granted. So this is all a collective effort and we all need to work on it. And I'm super excited that you're all here. And, and to, this is such an honor for me to be here and to be able to talk to all of you. Um, so I will share with you the link for uh, Yasum and um, please sign up. You will receive our uh, beautiful work that is being done by our youth leaders. We have amazing youth leaders that are award-winning, that are strong, that are powerful and their voices deserve to be heard. Um, so this is the link to our landing page. You can volunteer with us, you can share with your networks, you can donate, you can support, you can even just be our mentors. Masha, you know, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. No, we are, I'm glad. We're not going to get right. the, time and by, and the time, and I do want to take a minute to recognize yeah. a speaker who I thought I recognized, but I think she didn't feel like I did recognize her. So I I hope I don't mess up her name, uh, Maureen Gicky. I'm sorry, I know she spoke. I think she was in our um, room. And I do want to acknowledge that she actually did contribute. Um, I think she may have reduced another name in our room because I don't remember writing that name down. But if I'm here. Not, okay, great. There you go. Yes, I've seen you. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Yes, yes of um, I, I just wanted her to acknowledge that uh, I was in the room and that I also made my contributions. But I think it's all settled. Uh, I'm from Lagos. Nigeria and we're fighting human trafficking. We've been doing that for over 25 years and we raise awareness against trafficking in public places and in schools, in secondary schools. And we have um, an agreement with the Lagos state government to uh, go to girls schools and then to boys schools to raise awareness. Thank you, Terry. You're more than welcome. Thank you guys and thank you all. Thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It was a spirited discussion. Thank you all for all the shares. And let's keep working on this. This is not something that's going to change overnight, but I think with all of us collectively working together, we can certainly make that change. And we will be supporting Racha in, in her collective. We are all going to be supporting Generation Equalities meeting next week. Let's continue to stay in touch with each other as well. We, I've shared my, my contact information in the email, in the, in the chat as well. So we're, we're open to communicating with everyone from the South South and um, we do it virtually very well. So I, Terry, can I just, sorry, I, I know that we are on time, but can I just give Ishan one minute to give yeah. us a call for action because he is the youngest in the room and he is super fierce and inspiring. Ishan, please. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much for having me. It's been it's been such a great conversation to listen and to learn. But I think, you know, as a young person, my one call to action would be to engage young people in the anti-trafficking movement because, you know, we want to be listened to. We're not naive. We, we are intelligent. We might just be kids, but kids can do great things too. Um, so involve us in the conversation. Add us to your board if you run an anti slavery organization or, you know, create a separate advisory group, but also utilize our curiosity, our motivation our perseverance um, and, and act upon what we're asking you to do because you know we are young people we want a seat at the table but we want an equal seat to adults too you know we want our voices heard utilize us use us use our passion our motivation our, our youth um, and yeah I think once young people are mobilized and engaged um, we will see some more positive action around ending modern slavery and human trafficking in all its forms but thank you so much and thank you so much to everyone who's been here today as well and for allowing me the opportunity as well as a young person to to contribute to the discussion and to learn and to grow. So thank you. Thank you so You're much. So thank you all. I think we're going thank to. You. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Enjoy the rest thank of your you. day. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.